Before I launch into the outer limits, I want to make a few programming notes going forward. Um, I know some of you will be disappointed to learn that I'm not going to continue with the Outer Limits Season 2 just yet. Um, for, for now, the next thing I'm going to do is the Twilight Zone Season 1. But I do promise you, I will go back to the Outer Limits. I will do. I will cover Season 2. I just needed a little break for the sake of variety. And speaking of breaks, I'm going to take the next week or two off um, to get things situated before I start on the Twilight Zone for these TV mini-reviews. But don't worry. My regular sci-fi classic review will drop on schedule, assuming I don't get hit by a meteor or something. Um, so look forward to that. I also just wanted to say thank you to all of you who've been watching these smaller reviews and leaving comments and just interacting with me in general. I've started to notice that there's a growing sense of community in the comment sections of these videos, and that's more important to me than the bumpin' subscriber count I was hoping for and didn't actually get. Still, if you do want to support me, of course, you can like and subscribe, as always, but you can also uh, join me on Patreon, where I'm trying to make things a little bit more valuable to you by doing a whole series of reviews on all the 007 movies, starting with you know, Dr. No. Um, I hope to get that started in the next month or so, so look forward to that if you are a patron. But enough inside baseball. Let's, uh, let's get on to the outer limits, shall we? What is he doing? governor has asked me to read this statement. The Outer Limits. Though anthology horror series are still around with things like Black Mirror and Cabinet of Curiosities, they just don't make them like they used to. The thing I appreciate most about The Outer Limits is its willingness to push the envelope, to fearlessly experiment despite the demands of 1960s broadcast television and a limited budget. Say what you want about the first season of The Outer Limits, but you can't tell me it was holding anything back, even if there are more than a few stories of creative conflict and bad blood behind the scenes. That's not to say the show's perfect, however, and let's just get my most obvious criticism out of the way. The runtime. While some episodes filled the hour perfectly fine, and one or two could have even benefited from being longer, most of the episodes, even the best ones, fall victim to the need to pad things out, slow things down, and do more exposition than necessary. There are some notably egregious examples of this sprinkled throughout the season. Well, you're not going to slow it down. I most certainly am. But for the most part, if you go into each episode knowing this is baked into the cake, you can look past it. Most of the other common complaints I have boil down to time and budget restrictions, which sometimes result in Spartan sets, lackluster acting on occasion, and some writing that needed more polish. However, as is proven time and again throughout the history of film and television, these kinds of restrictions can also result in surprising innovation. There are many examples of this in the season as well, where minimalism and suspense work better than spectacle and action would have. The show also doesn't skimp on the creature designs, with one or two notable exceptions, and I love that there's virtually a new creature in every episode. One thing I can't praise enough as well is the cinematography. Every episode is artistically shot with clever lighting, unsettling framing, and a lot of uncomfortable close-ups that are just sparse enough to prevent you from losing a sense of the geometry of every scene. There are other shows from roughly the same time period that have good cinematography, but The Outer Limits takes it to a completely different level, one that is still impressive today. On the whole, I absolutely love the first season of The Outer Limits. It has ups and downs like any other show, but at the end of the day, it's damn good television. Now, before I go, let me go ahead and list my top five favorite episodes. These aren't necessarily the best or the most well-made episodes, but they're just the ones I find the most entertaining. Number five is A Feasibility Study, one of the show's most well-known episodes and one that was remade during the show's revival in the 1990s. This is the one where aliens abduct an entire town to see if humanity could be enslaved. I like the tone of it, the underlying moral dilemma, and of course, that jaw-dropping conclusion. For number four, I'm going with The Mice. In this episode, a death row inmate is volunteering to be part of a species exchange program with a snot monster that wants to spread his spores everywhere. I have a lot of nitpicks about the plot and some of the wonky character decisions, 
But The Mice makes this list because the acting is some of the best the series has to offer, making this a great one to watch over and over again. The lab! Stop him! My third favorite would have to be The Guests, the episode with the house full of crazy people who don't age and are being mind-controlled by an elder god or something. This one feels like an acid trip. In all the best ways. And something about it is just highly entertaining to me. Along the same vein, number two is Don't Open Till Doomsday, another weird and wild episode where everybody acts like lunatics and the plot only makes sense if you let yourself think laterally. This one is so high on my list, though, just because of Miriam Hopkins, whose performance is completely mesmerizing in its insanity. So that leaves my top spot. And I know I'm going to disappoint some fans by not naming any of the most popular episodes like The Xanti Misfits or Nightmare. Instead, I'm going with The Human Factor, in which a volatile Antarctic military base sets the stage for a traumatized soldier to body swap with a scientist who, for some reason, isn't in love with Major Houlihan. This episode feels like it should be too busy, with a lot of plot misdirects that include a creature who turns out to be nothing more than a trauma hallucination, an atomic bomb with a ridiculously complicated firing mechanism, subtle nods to who goes there, and the constant earthquakes that threaten to tear the place apart. For me, the human factor represents everything I love about the show. Its bold direction, its solid cast, and above all, the psychological complexity resting just beneath all the pulpy sci-fi horror. So yeah, it's my favorite episode of the show so far. And that's all I have on the first season of The Outer Limits. Now, as always, do all those youtube things, check out my Patreon, and all that other good stuff. But until next time, this is The Unapologetic Geek, telling you to never be ashamed of what you love, as long as you're not hurting anybody. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission.